like to invite uh, Paul Williams and John Conroy to join us for the presentation of the FPA Corporate Social Responsibility Award to Baker and McKinsey. The citation reads, Across their many offices around the world, Baker and McKinsey makes a significant commitment to bringing others, to helping others through pro bono legal services, community service, and, chat and charitable giving. The firm's core value statement includes the words, we value our communities. From the United Nations Commission on the Legal Empowerment of the Poor to Save the Children to Habitat for Humanity, Baker and McKinsey provides invaluable legal counsel and support. We take pride in presenting the Foreign Policy Association Corporate Social Responsibility Award to John Conroy and Baker and McKinsey. has asked me to uh, provide uh, a few minutes of introduction uh, for John and for Baker McKenzie. Uh, my name is Paul Williams and I'm the executive director of the Public International Law and Policy Group. I'm a client of Baker and McKenzie, uh, so they figured this was a great opportunity for me to tell a few stories uh, about my lawyers. Um, but before I begin, I was uh, this morning uh, I was uh, explaining to my little daughter that I was coming up to New York, and uh, she said, "Well, Dad, you know, my, my birthday party is is tomorrow on Friday, so you know, make sure you come back in time for my for my birthday party." And I said, "Oh, that's you know pretty interesting. Not not a problem. I'll be back because this evening it's it's also a birthday party. Uh, it's the 90th birthday party." of the Foreign Policy Association, and her eyes got really big, and she had said, are they going to have a water balloon toss? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, not on the agenda, but I saw uh, Ambassador Soar passing $100 to the head waiter. Um, so maybe, if you're really lucky this evening. The, uh, Noel had asked me to uh, sort of brief you on, on what Baker has, has been doing. And I was quite keen to accept his invitation because what excites me so much about birthday parties are that they celebrate either an individual or an organization. And in typical Foreign Policy Association fashion, uh, the FPA has chosen to celebrate three other organizations, Shell, John Deere, and Baker McKenzie, for their corporate responsibility. When I was thinking about how I might introduce John and, and Baker, I thought I could talk about the amazing work they've done for our organization on peace negotiations, prosecuting war criminals, and drafting post-conflict constitutions. I could talk about the work they've done for Narisha Singh and, and Mary Robinson on the UN Commission for Save the Children. But I thought, what better way to help you get to know the first law firm that has received the Social Responsibility Award than to tell some stories? So I was thinking I could tell the story where Bob Degman and John Felosi had to escort a Sudanese spy out of one of our client meetings from the London office. But that might have to wait until after dinner drinks. So instead, I'll tell you the story about Brandy Barrow. She's an associate in their San Francisco office. And we were having dinner one Friday evening with senior leadership of the San Francisco office. It was 10, 10.30. And the senior partner said, right, I'm heading back to the, to the hotel. Who needs a ride back? And Brandy said, well, I'll take a ride, but, but drop me off at the office. And I looked at Brandy and I said, Brandy, Friday, 10.30 at night? And she said, yeah, I've got a team of, client, a team of lawyers working all evening on a project for a client. I said, Brandy, what client would make you work on a Friday evening? She smirked, looked at me, and said, Paul, you're Sri Lankan office. I'm drafting a demobilization program for child soldiers in the recently liberated province, the eastern province of Sri Lanka. So I happily went back to the office with her and helped her draft the program. Another story was, if you look at Baker's website, across the top it says, if we don't have a lawyer in the country where you're heading, we'll send one with you. So I thought, I'll give this a try. Uh, we're heading off to Juba in southern Sudan, which was an old garrison town for the Sudanese army. 
I said, Baker, got any free lawyers? Thinking I'd get a second year associate who couldn't find Sudan on a map. Instead, I got Ed Matthews, one of their senior retired of councils. We packed our bags, we spent a couple of weeks in Juba, we were working for the government of southern Sudan. We were also working for some of the Darfur political movements. And one of the Darfur political movements had said, well, it's been great meeting you, but we'd really like to get you up to Darfur to meet the, mess, meet the rest of the team. You know, it's only a 20 hour drive. Um, we crossed the zone of conflict in the middle of the night, so it won't be a problem. So, of course, I whip out my calendar. I'm like, dentist appointment, Arlington, got to get back home. I look over to the Baker lawyer from support. There's Ed putting on his trekking boots and shoving power bars into his briefcase. Uh, he's like, what? We don't get to go to Darfur? My last story is about John Conroy, and I've been warned by Table 26 um, that I, uh, I'm treading on careful territory here. So I thought I would tell him about the first, or tell you, about my first meeting with John. Uh, it was supposed to be a three to four minute meet and greet. I was a new client, a chairman of the executive committee, former head of the global international banking and finance practice group. I actually bought finance in a nutshell. Uh, so I could understand our conversation. Um, our four minute conversation turned into a 45 minute discussion, not on finance, but on humanity, the ethos of public service, and basically developing a strategy for the next generation of legal leadership for corporate responsibility. And we all know the young associates nowadays are, are billing hours, billing hours, and, and, and churning late into the night. But that there is a strong drive within Baker and McKenzie for social responsibility, for commitment at all levels. When they tell you a pro bono client is the same as any client, they mean it. When they tell you a partner does pro bono as much as an associate does, they mean it. So I have to admit, in talking to some of the Baker lawyers, they were a bit surprised that they had received the first nomination and the first selection for corporate responsibility from the FPA. But I was not at all surprised. It very much fits the ethos of the Baker McKenzie law firm. So please join me in welcoming John. Thank you, Paul. Your Excellency, Ambassador Soares, and Mr. O'Byrne, Chairman De Las Heras, Vice Chairman Belknap, President Lovetief, and gentlemen and ladies, good evening. Thank you very much, Paul, for that very warm and, and very generous introduction. As most of you can tell, PIL, PG, and Baker and McKenzie have a very special partnership. I honestly don't think I would be here today were it not for that partnership. So, Paul, I would like you to know that we very much share this honor with you and with your team. Paul is too modest to volunteer this, but I would like everyone in this room, this room to know that just a few years ago, Paul and his organization were nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize for all of their work. Well done, as always, Paul, and PILPG. Thank you for the extraordinary opportunities that you provide to our firm and the uh, amazing work that you are doing that are making such a difference in the world. Tonight I'd like to express our gratitude on behalf of Baker McKenzie and our 10,000 people worldwide for the Foreign Policy Association's recognition of our social responsibility efforts throughout the world. This honor actually has had quite an impact on our lawyers and staff around the world. It has sparked a new dialogue within our firm about what more we can do and should be doing to address similarly critical needs we see throughout the world. I must confess that I feel somewhat guilty standing up here accepting this award because we have already received so much reward for the work that we've done to promote peace and prosperity in the troubled and disadvantaged parts of the world. For example, as you will have just seen, we have provided legal support for peace negotiations in conflict-stricken places in the world, for legal frameworks needed for nascent nation states, and for financial empowerment of the poor in various parts of the world. The feedback that we've received and the progress that we have seen from these efforts have been genuinely moving and reward enough. This recognition, however, is particularly rewarding because it reinforces what we stand for as a firm in the macro and in the micro social context where we find ourselves in the world. 
I don't know how familiar all of you here tonight are with Baker McKenzie. Perhaps you know us as one of the largest law firms in the world with offices in 70 uh, locations in 38 countries. But we have long held a distinctively different place in the legal world. Unlike other law firms who have become international uh, quite recently, Baker and McKenzie has been global almost from our inception 60 years ago. In fact, we grew globally before we acquired a dominant nationality. We started and we remain a firm that has a multilateral mindset. We started with a vision of becoming a partnership without nationality. And this worldview has shaped our approach to the people that we've hired, our ownership structure, our management model, and most importantly, our collaborative culture. As a result, we are seen by our clients to be as much Brazilian as we are Chinese, or Egyptian, or Indonesian, or French, or American, and so on and so on in the 30-some other countries where we have become deeply rooted. Our clients tell us they see our people as being passionately global, and they are. They also see in our people a natural fluency in the way we think, in the way we work and we behave throughout the world. Cross-border, cross-practice, cross-cultural activity is the norm for us, as it has been for decades. Combined with an uncompromising commitment to excellence, we have come to believe that our fluency is a powerful resource that should be leveraged not only for our clients, but also for the common wheel of the societies where we do business. I share this background on Baker and McKenzie because I believe it shapes our philosophical approach to social responsibility, which for us includes four primary areas. Pro bono legal services, diversity, sustainability, and community service. Given our global perspective and fluency, it seems natural that our social responsibility work would gravitate, as it has, towards some of the world's most complex and pressing issues. The video that you just saw a few moments ago provided a glimpse into the first of those areas, the pro bono legal services that we're providing to individuals and to a variety of cutting edge groups, none better typified than PILPG. These groups in particular are bringing new thinking and solutions to extraordinarily complicated and seemingly intractable problems with profound importance for our collective future. We work to apply our core competencies in understanding, interpreting, and shaping the law so that the rights of individuals and organizations can be established and protected. In short, we're steadfastly committed to establishing the rule of law where it doesn't exist and providing access to justice for all. This is what we stand for. In the area of diversity, we go the extra kilometer to celebrate and support our unique global culture. Our founder, Russell Baker, insisted from the very start that non-US lawyers should be treated with equal dignity and respect as full partners. This was a critical step toward building a partnership without nationality, or in Russell's words, without exploitation or prejudice. Today, more than 80% of our attorneys are located out of the United States. Compared with other firms, we have a higher percentage of our attorneys who are women, although we must make greater progress on this point, in part because women account for the majority of our people employed worldwide. So diversity is at the heart of who we are as an organization. We strive to take a multicultural approach in all that we do, allowing us to ground our counsel in the culture, cultural, legal, and economic realities in our markets. In sum, we do believe that our diversity enables us to be all that we aspire to be for our people, our clients, and our communities. This is what we stand for. The issue of sustainability is a universal concern now, and it's especially important to Baker and McKenzie. We were one of the first firms to form a climate change practice, which we did more than a decade ago. 
Today, our attorneys are among the world's most experienced international legal advisors in the areas of conservation, climate change, and sustainability. We have helped governments, companies, and agencies develop and implement initiatives aimed at protecting the world's national resources and animal species. At the same time, we are turning our expertise and attention inward to ensure that our practices as a firm are sustainable. We are currently undertaking a comprehensive and systematic audit and initiative to reduce our carbon footprint and to minimize our need for and consumption of scarce resources. This is what we stand for. And finally, our commitment to be involved in our communities is as deep and as diverse as the people and places where we operate. It would be impossible this evening to describe all the work that we are doing worldwide, but if I could share just one example, it would come from the Philippines. Currently, more than 40% of urban Filipino families live in makeshift housing. A nonprofit organization, Gawad Kalinga, which means to give care, hopes to change this by building 700,000 homes in 7,000 communities in seven years. Our lawyers in Manila recently worked with this group to provide an impoverished area in Mutinlupa City a second chance. Nearly 70 families lived in ramshackle homes with no running water and only 30% had a regular steady income. Today, thanks to the efforts of our lawyers and many others in the Philippines, the residents live in new homes and the community has a new school, library, health clinic, and public water system. Many residents have had the opportunity to attend college, they have found jobs, and there is now a finance program for budding entrepreneurs. The community, once on the brink of despair, is now filled with greater hope for the future. This, too, is what we stand for. In 1970, Milton Friedman argued that social responsibility of public corporations was to increase profit for shareholders, period. That perspective has changed dramatically. A 2007 study by Cohn, a leading firm in the area of cause branding, revealed that consumers, investors, employees, and our most junior talent now expect companies to have socially responsible policies and practices in place. I can certainly vouch for that. Our clients and prospects ask us about our social responsibility policies every day. New recruits want to know what we're doing in this area. Our lawyers and staff are raising the bar and expectations on what we are doing. The Cone Report also posed a simple and fundamental question for all organizations, whether they are public or private, to ask. And that question is, what do you stand for? I hope tonight that I've given you a better understanding of who we are at Baker McKenzie and what we stand for. Social responsibility in our firm is not an initiative or a professional obligation. We believe it is a calling, a calling that is firmly embedded in our core values. We understand that with our global legal expertise, we have the unique opportunity to make a difference in this world, especially in addressing some of the most pressing, complex, and profoundly important social issues. We really are proud of our efforts to be a socially responsible law firm, and we are sincerely grateful to be the first firm recognized by the Foreign Policy Association for this. But to be com completely candid with you, I believe this is just a good start, and that there's so much more we need to do and must do. As I said earlier, this award has helped to fuel a dialogue within our firm about that, and for that I'm especially grateful. It has helped to remind all of us at Baker and McKenzie that we have an extraordinary opportunity and responsibility to use our resources, talents, and competencies for the greater good of our societies worldwide, as well as for our clients. In closing, I would like to share one final thought on the topic of commitment to social responsibility. I recently read this. It was put out by a major uh, retailer located into the, in the UK, 
and they were referring to their social responsibility program as Plan A because, and I quote, there is no Plan B. Now that's commitment, commitment to which we can all aspire. Thank you very much.